Hey class, we're picking up where we left off before we were so rudely interrupted by the end of that last video. Um, so this is talking about transitionalism still in turn of the century literature and times. All right, so we had just mentioned that Queen Elizabeth celebrated her diamond jubilee and um, ended the longest reign of any monarch on the British throne to that point of um, when she died in 1901. She had served for 64 years on the throne. Um, of course, Queen Elizabeth II, she served longer now, but to that point, Victoria had served longer than anyone else. Um, and she died in 1901, which is, you know, within our, squarely within our turn of the century time period. Um, and it's quite an incongruous claim to fame for a woman in a country where she now, so she's the longest reigning monarch of the entire British Empire. She still could not even cast a single vote in any election. So she made policy for the country, but she could not elect, you know, members, um, the prime minister and things like that. So interesting, right? Yeah, she still couldn't vote. Neither could people in England, or neither could women in England, the rest of the women in England, that is, or, or women in America still couldn't vote in a federal election. All right, so with Victoria's death and even sometime before it, Victorian restraint that's so associated with prudery faded. Um, social convention became less formal, clothing less restrictive as corsets. You know, those are the, the whalebone um, structures that went around the waist to tighten the waist to make it look as small as possible. Um, and hoop skirts, uh, which were to make the the dress balloon out, you know, kind of like that classic Gone with the Wind Scarlet O'Hara dress look. Um, those were replaced with bustles. Bustles kind of went on the backside to make your rear end look bigger. Oh, they'd probably be popular now, right? Isn't that in? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So they wore these bustles in the back to make to make the back stand out more. But they had straight straighter skirts, so where they didn't flare out you know, with that giant hoop skirt look, you know, and the tiny little waist. Uh, and so they, you know, still had a slender waist, but then the bustle went out and a straighter, straighter up and down lines for the skirt. Um, but more daring things entered literature and art, both the covert and overt, that means open, eroticism of Algernon, Algernon Swinburne's poetry, Aubrey Beardsley, Augusta Webster, whom we're setting this week, you know, if you remember from her Circe poetry, there's, there is a lot of interesting imagery there with Circe awaiting Odysseus, you know, longing for his arrival. And Kate Chopin, yeah, there's a lot in Kate Chopin. We'll read Kate Chopin next week, but if you read some of her short stories, there's certainly a lot um, of, of covert and overt eroticism. And also in the piece of hers that we read for class, which is The Awakening. So, Awakening of the Woman, yeah. Anyway, that's to name a few of the authors that, you know, really started to have these new women characters and um, more more erotic themes, or not necessarily what we'd call erotic, but, you know, um, sexuality was more on the table. You know, women might have children out of wedlock and things like that. All right. Um, black people still struggled against prejudice, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, with all the segregation that was going on, um, while women struggled for their own civil rights, they still didn't have civil rights, women in general, even though um, uh, freed former enslaved black men had a lot more rights, but weren't always enforced, were they? Like, people sometimes took justice into their own hands, quote-unquote justice. I don't mean it was real justice, but I mean what they can consider justice, right? And so you had a lot of um, things happening without trials in the South, you know, the, not always the rule of law when it came to enforcing the rights of Black people, unfortunately. Yeah, so it was still a lot of room to go, you know, for the civil rights on that front. All right, that is the end of our discussion of transitionalism. So I'll see you back when we discuss industrialization of the time period.